19. Correct. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Welcome to the first ever edition of Portals and Altars. And um, it's, it's been, uh, you know, something that works for quite a while. And um, it's just wonderful that we eventually are having this. And uh, yeah, we started way, way, way behind schedule. Some uh, technical uh, um, difficulties. Uh, and um, to do this with me today, I have um, some of my friends here. I have Victor on the keyboard, I have Steven on the drums as well. I have Tofumi here also helping me, and um, we have the privilege of using uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the Mind Studios for uh, this particular broadcast. I, uh, it's a privilege to be working together with all of these wonderful people. All right, glory to God. Uh, without you know, wasting much of our time anymore, can we just you know, worship God? And bless his name of God in this place tonight. Can we just give him thanks and praise? Because he's good and his mercy is in us forever. Oh, we bless your name, Jesus.
la mangale le bo sala ba e ori abani musala ba ya kacha e ala ba re sala ba e ya la ba ha sha ha lifting up my head put off my leaves dances of my feet the praise from my heart chapter 1 and you know we're talking about the creation story and it all started from the point where Jesus I, I mean God was talking and I, I, you know it all started from you know the Holy Spirit over and over, over upon the face of the water and then the scripture went to and God said and God said and you know one thing that is amazing you know with that entire scripture from verse 1 to the end is that it is littered with and God said and God said and the Holy Spirit was ministering to my heart some things that I was you know meditating upon that scripture you see 
whenever God speaks, something, something sets off. I mean, the process, you know, is ignited. And you know, one of the things that we're coming to do here in Portals and Altars is not just another regular gathering where, you know, we just come together for the jamboree of it. I mean, we just, uh, you know, like gathering of other supermen, you know, just coming to blast out in tongues and worship and all of that. What we gathered here to come and do is to come and ignite our altars and from link portals and altars. You know, they say something about when the praises of God goes up, His blessings come down. But what, we come, what, what we're here to do, is to ignite our altars, you know, for a lot of persons, you just need that fire on your altar. And for a lot of persons, you just need to be reignited. For other persons, you need the touch of God, you know, for you to begin to operate at the level that God wants you to operate. And that is what we're here to do, potters and altars. It is just a gathering of people who, you know, desire more of God. And, you know, from that scripture, God was making me to understand something that you know for us to actually get you know this fire upon our altar it takes God speaking like I have jotted here it says that whenever God says something it sets off a process things begin to move things begin to align things begin to organize you see Bible makes us understand that the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep but the moment God said let there be light Bible makes us understand there was light. Something responded. Something responded. And not just that, we can see later, you know, verse 6, verse, you know, verse 8, but, you know, to the end of that particular chapter. And God said, and God said, I also have here, you know, when God speaks, portals are opened. You know, there was nothing like light when God was speaking. But the moment He spoke, a portal was opened in the realm of the Spirit that made the possibility of light available. That made the possibility of light available. When God speaks, the realm of possibilities appear. When God speaks, the realms of possibilities appear. And you know one thing that also amazed me when I was reading that particular chapter? Bab makes us understand that after God speaks, when He says, you know, it's recorded, and God said, but one thing then happens. He then says, and God called something to be, you know, when he made, you know, the, uh, 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 the earth and the sky. And he said, you know, he made, the, he called, you know, uh, 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 the dry part, he called it land. And then he made the body of water, he called it the sea. So everything that has been created takes its identity from the speech of God. Everything that has been created takes its identity from what God says. Whatever God has called you to be aligns, you know, to the sayings of God. Because God, when He says something, a calling, a, a, an identity follows it. Right? The reality of the calling, you know, of each and every one is embedded in what God says. I, I, I just want to ask you tonight, what has God said about you and God said? And God said, and God said, and you know, this is a prophetic dimension of God. This is a prophetic dimension of God. It's not something, you know, that is far-fetched from what the identity of God is. Forth, forth telling, speaking forth, and things obeying, you know, what he has said. When God speaks, realities are formed. When God speaks, realities are formed. There was nothing like night and day before God spoke. But when God spoke, night and day became a thing. When God spoke, the fishes of the sea, the birds of the air, the animals on the land became a thing. When God spoke, the trees of the field, all the fruit bearing plants became a thing. When God spoke, everything received its identity. Everything received the reality. Everyone and everything that has been created by God, you know, derives its identity from what God has said. And when God says a thing, you draw your identity from it. And you know, you know, it's a spiritual order that, you know, what follows, you know, what God says is a reality. It's a just a spiritual order. When God says a thing, there is a reality and then there is a calling. God says a thing, there is a reality formed and then there is a calling. So in our identity, our identity is derived from what God says. You know, I, 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 and 
it's just a marvel when we think about how God says things and it comes to pass. Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 4, that God is, you know, that one who calls things that be not as though they were. And so even if things that don't exist, he can call them, you know, into manifestation. But then also as we, you know, enjoy that God says this and it comes to pass. He says things and it comes to pass. We must also be careful, you know, what we do, what we align ourselves to. Right, because when God speaks, everything responds. And you don't want to be on the bad side of the speakings of God. You don't want to be on the wrong side of what God says. You remember the children of Israel, you know, those uh, 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 people who were following Moses. And the moment they began to feel like, yeah, God can speak to us as well. Those who went to offer the wrong incense upon the altar, what did God do to them? He consumed them by fire. Why? Because on the side of where they are, it was on the other side of what God speaks. It was way on the other side of what God speaks. And for us to actually get fire on our altar, we have to offer up the right sacrifices. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, that we should continually offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, because this is our true act of service. Because only then can we test and approve what God's good pleasing will is. What is good pleasing and perfect will is. So it is important that if we will get fire on our altar by what God says. We must offer ourselves as a holy sacrifice unto God. We must not offer the wrong incense. We must not offer the wrong fire. Bible records in a place that those people were destroyed because they offered strange fire you know to God I mean that was I, I, I think in the camp of the Israelites when Achan you know stole something and then there was just a whole lot of rancor and who was in the camp and he said because there was strange fire upon the altar look at the sons of Aaron as well that were consumed Every, there's an order to which things must be done and there's a presentation for everyone who would want fire on their altar not going too deep into that what has God said about you or what is God saying about you and God said and God said let there be light I'm going to dwell on that and God said let there be light you know sometimes we're looking out to God you know for this fire upon our altars we want to do great and mighty things we want to achieve great things it is all based on the revelation of light you know Paul preaching or speaking to the Ephesians says I pray to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that He may grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him. That you, in enlightening your mind, might be able to see, you know, the riches of His glorious calling, you know, among the saints. The riches of His glorious inheritance among the saints. It is the function of light. But this light can only be gotten when God speaks. See, the, the, the realm of communication in the kingdom of God is by light. Communication in the kingdom of God is by light. And then we can only get light when God speaks. No wonder the psalm is recorded in the book of uh, 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 um, Psalms. That the entrance of the word give it light and give it understanding to the simple. When God speaks, there is light. And when God speaks and you have light, then the fire upon your altar can be ignited. You might begin to want to wonder, so how does, you know, light and fire upon my altar how do they how do they how do they align see the moment your eyes is opened you begin to function how you need to function remember the story of jacob in genesis chapter 28 i mean because he didn't have an understanding his eyes were not open but where he was he didn't know that was a portal but at the moment his eyes opened in a vision he saw angels of god ascending and descending he saw angels of God ascending and descending and that was the turning point for him and what happened afterwards he erected an altar in that place and called it Bethel he said because God dwells here why? the realm of light came his eyes were opened and he was able to see where God is and he was able to then establish an altar now we don't we're not in the Old Testament we're not saying to be uh, 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 um, you know putting stones together putting things and be lighting fire and all God is not interested in our burnt offerings anymore as it were 
what God is interested in is our altar, the altars, the altar of God in our heart. What God is interested in and comes from God. And God said, let there be light. And God said, let there be light. Say a lot of things that we're struggling with. A lot of things that, you know, we, 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 we are wanting to make happen. You know, say a lot of people are just down. But they want to do more. They want to be able to serve God the way our God wants. You know, Bible says in John chapter 4, verse 24 and 25, that time uh, is coming and has now come when the worshippers of God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. For those are the kinds of worshippers that the Lord is seeking. Glory to God. This is a function of light. See the Samaritan woman, the moment her eyes open, she stops. She stopped living the way she, she was, and her life changed. There was a transformation. Transformation is by light and by the words. See, but Jesus speaking to the disciples says, The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And God said, And God said, See, we can go on and on and on and on and talk about what God said. What God said. What God said. What God said. And you know, I want to end up this note. Is that when God says something, the spiritual order of what follows is the goodness of God. The spiritual order of what follows is the goodness of God. You see, the Bible talks about how that when God said, let there be light, and there was light. He records that, and God looked at everything, and he saw that it was good. And you know, the goodness of God is God's own nature. So it definitely must flow in his speech, in what he says as well. It definitely must flow in what he says. When God speaks, goodness follows. You see, a lot of persons are wanting to experience the goodness of God then are not inclined their ears to what God is saying. The Bible talks about inclining our ears to instruction. Part of what God is saying also, it, it, it comes, boils down to instruction. And we know that instruction is life. So when God speaks, it's a voice of command, it's a voice of instruction. When God said, let there be light, it was not an advice. It was not, it was not a, 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 just a statement. It was a command. It was an instruction and everything had to be. So if we want to enjoy and experience the goodness of God, we must incline our ears to what God is saying and then obey. So that means our attitude, the posture of our heart, if we want to experience or contact the fire of God upon our altar, must be a posture of obedience to what God is saying. Must be a posture of obedience to what God is saying. Must be a posture of being inclined to the voice of God. You see, a lot of persons, God is talking to you in your spirit. God is speaking to your spirit. That's still small voice. That inward witness. But you've been ignoring it for a while. He's been saying, do this. You might say, you know, it's significant to you, but it's an instruction. And only then can you experience the grace and the manifold grace and goodness of God. You see, Bible speaking in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, when he was saying, and God cause all grace to abound towards you so that you have a sufficiency in all things may abound unto good works this is not just for people who are like a desk of bad instructions this is for those who are inclined to instructions this is for those who are obedient who have a posture of obedience to the instructions of God so when God speaks and you obey automatically the fire upon your altar is primed why because your heart is your, your heart is tuned to the frequency of God God is tuned to the frequency of God. So, I don't know where or for what reason that you require the fire of God upon your altar. I don't know where you, where you need the goodness of God. I don't know where you want the voice of God, you know, to come into your life or into your situation. But I'm talking to you tonight. That incline your ears to instruction. Incline your ears to instruction. Open up your heart to instruction. Because God is speaking always. God is speaking always. God is speaking always. But it's left for us to be able to pick the frequency of what God is saying. It's for us to be able to pick what God is saying for time. God is always speaking and we need to incline our hearts to what God is saying. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, can you just pray the Holy Ghost for one minute?
And God said, and God said, Pastor God is speaking to some person's situation tonight. Ilana kidzola parana mashara balaga digozi ala barada bakani bokusha. Ikado shara baha dies of my spirit like an explosion. Aliburu teke di moshara baha like outburst of fire. Kabasha la pani katili buru de gahaske. Lebrena koshi ala bana mandele gidi bogo de barada bagada bahasha. If you want fire upon your altar like I do because I want more of God's fire upon my altar I want you to just open up your mouth and pray in the Holy Ghost And let the break your doors get parati bo shalabana mani gili ganaske Ile bro do go do go de balaga shaga de balaga de baha Shiki kiti ligi di burru go de boko shaga de balabana mahasha Man de break your doors so le porro de gede mana ma shalabaha Lega de brusa le pani gudi ana badi shada bahane mandele kusa apasi God speaking to the hearts of some persons tonight ega da baru shada balaga de bono gode bogo shiki de lega de baha me de ligo salaman de lega de boko shaga da baha in my in my ears in my spirit I can hear renewed commitment renewed commitment you want to experience you know the fire of God upon your altar. And you want the portals of grace, the portals of possibilities, the realms of possibilities, the realms of favor, the realms of grace to open up to you. Kabasha na madabaha. You need to make a renewed commitment to God tonight. Alima na kasi ni buru gada hashke. You need to make a renewed commitment to God tonight. Lesa para shite para da geske para na bahasha. Come and open up your mind and just talk to God. Say, Lord, I need you. I need you. I need you, Kadi Gosala Banama Kosha, and I submit myself to you tonight, Dekada Bahasha, Rodesole Banama Shada Baha, renewing my commitment to you, Ke Bahasha, to give myself all to you, to give all of myself to you, to give all of myself to you. Magadebo Shagada Balabada Balagadebo Sha, you need to pledge that allegiance and, 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 and just hold it tightly, Kabasha. Alamana kosha na baha, ilo buru de kede makadi buru shada ba.
heart that you made that commitment to you surrender surrendering everything to him i hope you just made that commitment to him so that he can put fire upon your altar so that your ears can open and you can begin to hear and see what he's saying and one more thing you're there and and, and uh, you don't have that relationship you see all of these things that we've talked about to hear God to to for God's voice you know to come to you for you to receive fire upon your altar it is a function of being submitted to have submitted your life to to God and you see God is a loving father it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter where you're coming from it doesn't matter what you've done God is calling on to you his arms are open wide because he loves you he loves you and he wants to have that fellowship you see these things about portals and altars and the voice of God and the fire of God we're talking about is a function of fellowship God desires fellowship with us that is the reason why he created man that is the reason why he created man and so God desires a fellowship with you as well and if you're there and you want to make a commitment to God you want to surrender your life to God you want to you want to give yourself to God so that he can fellowship with you so that he can be your father and you his son so that you can come into fellowship with him I want you to just place your hand upon your chest and just say these words after me say Lord Jesus I surrender myself to you tonight I give you all of me I give you all of me all of me I ask that you come in and be my Lord and my Savior I forsake my old ways I forsake the past I forsake who I used to be and I cling on to you tonight I ask that you come into my life and save me I ask in the name of Jesus that you change my life and change my story and bring me into fellowship with you I want to experience your love I want to experience your grace and I thank you because through Jesus Christ tonight I am accepted in the beloved uh, oh glory to God if you just said that prayer I want to just encourage you to reach out you know to reach out to me you can reach out to me and, and uh, uh, you know I'll be glad to, to, to uh, fellowship with you you can reach out to me via my whatsapp number 081-3287-9816 I take it again 081-3287-916 see Evan is glad that you made that decision to fellowship with God and uh, 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 for you to have a relationship with God you know Evan is glad and I, I want to congratulate you and one more thing as well you need to find a Bible believing church to be a part of so that you can further more enjoy fellowship with God can we just go to God with thanksgiving as we wrap it up tonight Lord we thank you we give you glory we give you honor and adoration we bless you